um, let me give you for instance. I was reading not too long ago an article about the Paradise, I think it's the Paradise Fire in California. Remember the big one that took, took all those lives last year? And in reading about it, they actually did a documentary on it, and I watched it, and as I was watching it, I saw the people going back, and it was, it was so horrific and so unexpected. At one point, the fire that came to that place, all the roads were cut off. And there was a school bus full of children with the teachers. And one of the teachers was recounting her story, her, her, her part in that. And she said that it was a challenge keeping all of these kids' attention with fire and smoke raging all around them on a school bus. Can you imagine? And so they're driving. The driver's trying to stay focused. There's traffic everywhere. And at some point, the firemen came, got everybody out of the bus and out of all the vehicles and said, there's nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. So they instructed, they were, they were in a parking lot, as it were, and their instruction was for everybody to lay flat on the ground so that the fire could pass over them. Now think about this for a minute. And so the lady, the school teacher, everybody in that group, Everybody that laid on the ground, and the fire literally burned itself out over top of them. You can, you can find it. I don't know if I saw it on Netflix or whatever, but you can find it. So the lady, after a certain point of time, decides, the teacher decides she's going to go back to the school. She goes up to the school, and her words are very interesting. She says nothing about being out of a job. She says nothing about all of the, the things that were lost. But she goes in and she starts looking at the pictures that the babies drew on the wall and says that these are the most important things in my life. I wonder how many of us miss the gravity of what's simply uh, a day-to-day -day thing in our lives that God thinks is highly important and valuable. I'm a, I'm a papa now. <laughs> Okay, my wife and I am proud, Papa and Mimi. I shouldn't, not proud, we are, we are very pleased. We, 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 heard, we learned about that word, you know. Uh, very pleased, Papas and Mimis, okay. There really ain't much that my babies can do that's going to that's gonna make me mad. That's for my sons and daughter. Just kidding, just kidding. So, but with that, when I was in my 20s, I didn't understand as much as I do now the value of just the times that they come in and say, I love you. Or, 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 or they just come in, he's got this habit, he likes to climb me like I'm Mount Papa. Doesn't matter what I'm doing. Doesn't matter if I'm in my office. Doesn't matter if I'm deep in thought or in prayer. He doesn't care. He doesn't read do not disturb signs. What is that? I'm coming to see Papa. And so in my natural understanding, I think it's way cool that I can enjoy my, my, my granddaughters. My, I got one, one granddaughter. She is forever trying to scare somebody. And I tell her, you can't scare me because there's no fear in my heart. And she doesn't get that concept, but she's starting to learn it. Now, now, I say that because I'm thinking, I'm thinking that I just think that God is greater than me. Yeah. And I think he really loves that his people come and they raise their hands. That his, the people come and they give their seed and they receive communion. And they do all these things that are supposedly, quote, unquote, ceremonial and religious. But I wonder how much he misses my voice. Because the greater value is not the things that I do, but who I am. The greater value is not how I act, but what I say. See, the church world gets caught up in what we act, how we act. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I, the, the church is more concerned about, I think I can understand this way, because I got better feet over here. I don't know. It's cutting it out. But, 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 but it, there's, there's so much concern about the way we dress. There's so much concern about where we sit. There's so much concern about what I'm called to do. There's so much concern about how people address me. There's so much concern about who the speaker is. 
There's so much concern about, you know, I have this need. And, 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 and it is a very selfish indictment indeed for all of us borderline narcissistic when all we concern ourselves with what, with, with what our needs are without concerning ourselves with, with what other people's needs are and more importantly with what God needs for me to do. Can you say value? Most of us now, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have, uh, you know, full transparency. I don't have a stock portfolio yet. I got some things, but I ain't got no, I don't have stock in Walmart and Berkshire Hathaway, P&G, and, you know, I mean, you know, you might. That's good. So I really can't put much value on that because I don't have that. And we talked last time I was before you about whatever our hands find to do. See, my value is found in my service to the master. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If I can't serve him, then I really, have, am, I really don't have any value. Yeah. Right. And, and, and listen, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. It's not a matter of me serving him. It's a matter of me serving him where and when he wants me to serve him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, glory. I, I mean, if, 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 mo if, if we had a chance to pick, you know, uh, let me be careful here because I don't want to sound petty. <laughs> no offense, Bridget and John. But, <laughs> but, but and, 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 yeah, so, so as an inside joke, y'all get that later. Anyway, but, but, but if, I, if, I, if, if I'd rather serve him on Sunday morning than serve him at the soup kitchen on Saturday evening. Because to go down there, I got to get dirty. And they don't smell so good. I mean, in here, you know, I smell cologne and perfume and I see nice attire but out there but Jesus makes the point he says you know you know you, look you came to when I was in jail you visited me when I was hungry you fed me come on somebody value say value all right let me keep going I don't I don't want to bore you let's what I leave you I left you at, at Mark Mark 16 Mark 16 verse 16 you have a say man he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Read this from the King James Version. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Why did he sit down? Was he tired? What was he? He was finished. Come on now. Galatians 5. I'm going to give you, told you, I'm gonna give you some scriptures. Galatians 5. You can mark Mark 16. You can put a place there because I'm probably going to come back to that. Galatians 5. Glory to God. This is more scripture reading than a lot of people have done all month. Verse 7. Before you were led astray, you were so faithful to Messiah. Why have you now turned away from what is right and true? Who has deceived you? Verse 8. The one who enfolded you into his grace is not behind this false teaching that you've embraced. Not at all. Don't you know that when you allow even a little lie into your heart, it can permeate your entire belief system? That's verse 9. You need to put something by that. We're going to come back to that. Deep in my heart, verse 10, I have faith that the Lord Jesus, the anointed one who lives in you, will bring you back around to the truth. And I'm convinced that those who agitate you, whoever they think they are, will be brought under God's judgment. Hallelujah. Say amen. amen. Thank you, Father. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. I'm going to skip down because there's going to be a part two to this, but I'm going to skip down. Notice the phrase here. Notice the phrase here uh, in Galatians. Let me get back to it. Verse 9. Don't you know that when you allow even a little lie into your heart, it can permeate your entire belief system? We just read before that, when we read over in Mark, the Bible says these signs shall follow them that are pastors, Believe. them that are apostles, Believe. them that believe. Amen. It's easy for us, I'm just going to be me today and do me by God's grace. Yeah. It's easy for us to believe and think that somehow or another that the pastor has a greater anointing than the, than the, than the, the pew. Because we've, we've acted like that. I said we've acted like that. 
I can see eyes getting heavy, so I'm going to have to start walking. Whether I cut out or not, it ain't going to matter. <laughs> we act like that. We act like somehow or another, you know, Pastor Tommy, Pastor Not Apostle, and all the rest of you, the, the, the ministers, they, somehow or another they got this. No, you know, what we have, we have grace yeah. to do what we're called to do. Yeah. Those ministers that are in the minister's class, you know, you, you know I, I can make a case for, you know, somebody out on the street that just got born again, they're anointed. I got, I got a mm on that one. And somehow or another, we think that we're more anointed because we've been doing ministry longer. Or somehow or another, we think we're less anointed because I ain't called to be a preacher. The devil is a liar. And what happens is we start, we start having these celebratory acts to think that somehow or another, because this person or that person is in, in, in the vicinity that I should be there to receive from this person or that person. I can tell you right now that our babies that are over there carry as much anointing as I do, as you do. The only difference is I believe it. I said I believe it. I don't feel it. Most of the time you don't feel anything. But if we went based on our feelings, we'd never get anything done for God. I don't have to ask the room. Most of y'all didn't feel like coming to church this morning. I said most. I didn't say all. Oh, I said most. <laughs> Amen? My wife and I truthfully overslept. We rarely oversleep. She was like, get up. Because I was working on this way too late. But my point is this, that what we value has to line up and be in divine alignment with what God values. Can I, can I keep going? Let me keep going. Is that all right? I, now, I, I'm going to come back, and we're going to visit this. I just don't, for the sake of time, I'm going I'm to I'm do a couple of things. Where is, where is my spotter? Where should I stand? Where should I stand? Right here. Okay, I'm going to stand right here in front of y'all. All right. I want you to, I want you to pull you, pull you. Get your hearts ready. It's coming now. It's coming. I, 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 I sense him now. It's coming. Get your hearts ready. I didn't say it. I, I didn't say it. Get your, she's my wife. She goes, she's there. The Holy Ghost go right there. Turn, tune, your, tune, your, tune, your, tune it in. Your spiritual ears. Spiritual eyes. Are you ready? Because I'm going to give you some stuff now. This is going to help you. All right? You will be more effective if you'll be more selective. You'll be more effective if you be more selective. Everybody can cook. Everybody can cook. Matter of fact, a lot of what we eat in many churches might as well come out the microwave. Or, or, or worse yet, fast food. You tell me the nutritional value of McDonald's as opposed to you know, that good old southern cooking without all the fat and say, say, say somebody about without all the fat and all that other stuff, avocados as opposed to Twinkies. Tell me which one is better. Now, the, the avocados may not taste as flavorful, but the Twinkies, they're going to do some damage that you can't see. Can you say amen to that? All right. I'm fighting this thing this morning. We're going to get it. It's, it's going to lose. <laughs> it's going to lose. So, so you'll be more effective if you be more selective. Can you say amen to that? What do I mean? I mean that, you know what? Somebody said I was ready. I, you know, I, I've, been, I've been, I'm on a quest, man. I'm on such a quest. I want to know God in a greater, greater intimate level than I've ever known him before. I'm simply not satisfied with what I've seen to date. If this is all there is, I don't want to play no more. Write this down. It hurts your faith if you are not confident before you release it. Some people say, well, you know, um, I'm, I'm a person of faith. I hope you are. Not all faith is Bible faith. Not all faith is Bible faith. Can I get a better amen than that? You need to be, have your faith ready and in tune to release 
to get any need met in the kingdom. Do you not know, look up at me for a minute, please, that you have God's faith? That's where you got it from. And in having God's faith, he expects that you will add to it virtue, love, kindness, understanding, and say this, I want to. Most people don't want to. I better keep going. If you're really going to be valuable, see, and let's, let's be clear. You know, it's one thing to be valuable to me. It's a whole other thing to be valuable to him. You know, I think a lot of times we get caught up in, you know, you know, we've been, my wife and I have been together for a while, you know, a long time, going on 40 years. And there's times I'm not a, of a whole lot of value to her. I mean, I'm saying that in a good way. Because, you know, if, if I'm out catching fish, she can't call on me. But, but, but it's one thing for me to understand if I'm really in sync, oh, help me, Lord. If I'm really in sync and I'm really in covenant with the master or with somebody, I never discount. Before I go catching, I always let her know where I'm going or where she can find me. The true test of, of apostleship or, excuse me, of discipleship is that can God always find you? You say, well, what does that mean? Well, Everybody is located here this Sunday morning, right? Not hard to find you. Where are you going to be tonight? You going to stay home? Where are you going to be Monday? Oh, well, that's what I do on Sunday. All right, all right, that didn't go over very well. I better get back. Come on. Are you right? Are you, are you there? Okay, let's, let's keep going. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it hurts your faith if you're not confident before you release your faith. This is a good one. <laughs> Write this down. Liars cannot be people of faith because they don't believe their own words. Liars cannot be people of faith because they don't believe their own words. There is no such thing as a good lie. There is no such thing as a little white lie. Amen. There is no such thing as a little black lie. Amen. A lie is a lie yes. is a lie. Yes. And you might think that you were just trying to spare their feelings. But I'm going to show you here in a minute what you actually did was enter into covenant with the devil to deceive somebody that you said you loved. And when we try to gloss over the things that God considers valuable, like the truth, then it's no wonder when our needs aren't met, our bodies aren't healed, and our prayers seem to go nowhere. Because the lie sets us up to be in covenant with devils. Yes. Thank you for your enthusiasm over that one. <laughs> so liars cannot be people of faith because they don't trust their own words or believe their own words. Remember, remember what, what Jesus said to Thomas. He said, Thomas, you said that you would not believe except you touch my hands. You said that you would not believe except you... Put your finger in my side. Get your, this is Tommy's translation, get your happy little self over here because we can't move forward. I am looking you in the eye and telling you that I am truth personified. I am the master. And if you don't get beyond this, you will never see the goodness of God in your life. Amen. And Jesus emphasizes that it is good that you did this, but it is better for those of us, hallelujah, that have never seen him to believe in him because we are highly blessed and loved of the master. Amen. Do I have any witnesses to that? Amen. A lie is a dangerous thing. <laughs> Let me keep going. Are you all right? <laughs> let's read. Let's, I got a couple more passages of scripture. How much time do I have? Okay. 
And Jesus answered Mark, I'm sorry, Mark 11, 22. I didn't give you where. Mark 11, 22. I got much more, but I'm just skipping around by the Holy Spirit. Mark 11, 22. Very, very familiar passage of Scripture. I'm going to read through verse 24. I'm reading from the King James Version. You have it? Say amen. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. Most translations have, have the God kind of faith, right? Because you can have it. So I can have it. Now say, I do have it. Verse 23, for verily or truly I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Boy, we've heard this so many times. Be thou removed. I can't remember who it was. Who was it that said we should be, we should be mountain movers instead of mountain climbers? Too many people climbing mountains instead of moving them. It speaks to impotence and it speaks to weakness and no faith. Oh, this mountain's in front of me. So you're going to climb it or you're going to move it? Oh, yeah, yeah, that song, you know, up the road. Rough side of the mountain, not me. I said, not me. So he goes on to say, whosoever. Now, when it says whosoever, (laughs) what does that mean? Who in here is excluded from whosoever? Okay. Shall say unto this mountain, and I'm going to tell you something else. It didn't say pray unto the mountain. It didn't say spend six hours in prayer pleading, pleading the blood over the mountain. It didn't say fast six days and, and throw the rosary beads in the air and do a spinner. It said talk to the mountain. Tell the mountain who you are. Do you have any idea who I am? See, some of us are so, so, so nicey, milk toast and weak and impotent that we just, we want Jesus to do the work. I just told you he sat down. He didn't sit down because he was tired. He sat down because he's done. And, and listen, if he's sitting down, you better get up. Now I can walk anywhere. So some of y'all on the outskirts over here, I got to come see y'all territory too. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Woo! See, because the mountain, the mountain has been put there, the mountain has been put there intentionally. Not to see how good God is. See where you at. Come on now. You name a mountain that God created As an obstacle, you can't do it. However, he has allowed some mountains to be there because you need to grow up. Let's stop playing here, okay? Let's stop playing. I just I just sense this thing going to a place. I'm I'm just gonna take you because see, because I know I know what's in you. I know who's in you. Yeah, we got some warriors up in this place. So so listen. If, if, you know, there's, it's one thing for you to go out there and go through, go through the, uh, the, 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 let's just say, you know, I went through basic training in the Air Force. Basic training in the Air Force is a whole lot different than the Marine Corps. A whole lot different. Why you think I went to the Air Force? I could have, I had my pick. I picked the right one, baby. But in my, in my going through that, it still equipped me for anything that I was called to do while I was in the Air Force. They didn't call me to come to the Marine Corps when I'm in the Air Force. You are called as a son and daughter of the Most High God. You can go out here and work this world system all you want to, but if you're a son of God, a daughter of God, you better get on God's system because the rest of it ain't going to last. So when you show up in the building and folks is going losing their mind and you stand up there saying in the name of Jesus, come, what is going on in this place? And you start taking authority and talking to the mountain instead of letting the mountain yell at you and shake and quake and try to get you all unnerved. That's what they do. That's not what you do, baby. OK, let me keep going. You all right? It's one of them things that make you want to say, say yeah. <laughs> Amen. Let's keep going. Still Mark 11, 22, 23. Says, and shall, listen, uh, let, me, let me go back. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. 
but shall, what's the word say? Write that down. Mark it. You need to understand this because where I'm going to next. But shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have, what, have whatsoever he says. Therefore, I say unto you, this is Jesus talking, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. Remember what I told you a few minutes ago? The problem is most of us don't believe our own words. We have spent so much time trying to look good in front of people. You know, and the, the problem with the liar is that they don't, they have to keep telling another lie to cover up the old one. And I'm going to tell you something else. And I, I, I want this to go out on the airways. Whoever hears it, receive it. I don't care if you do or not. I'm going to tell you like this. You got plenty of preachers that lie. Yes. Plenty of them. Yes. They say, well, I didn't know that. Or I'm ignorant. Listen, if you're if you ignorant as a preacher, I can't throw the word shame because I, I, I preached against it. But you need to be convicted by the Holy Ghost. Yes. Somebody stands up and tells you the healing's not for the day. They're lying to you. Somebody tells you the Holy Spirit is, 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 is no longer relevant when Jesus makes it abundantly clear throughout the New Testament. What Bible are they reading? And, and you eat that? It's feeding into your belief system. And we want people to stand up and slap us with oil, lay hands on us, pray over us. That's why we get into multiple prayer. Help me, God. That's why we get into so many prayer lines because we don't believe that when one person prayed it was enough to get the job done. Oh, can I take it to somewhere else? I have the ability, by God's grace, hold that for me, please. I have the ability, by God's grace, I am the prophet of my own life. I am the high priest of my house under the lordship of Jesus Christ. If something shows up in my house, I have every right to condemn it and cast it out of my house. Cancer shows up in my body, it has no right to be there. I didn't say it wasn't, I said it doesn't have a right to be there. And if I accept it and I buy into the lie, well, you know, you're just getting older. Well, you know, your mind is supposed to, the devil is a liar. And then we want somebody to come lay hands on me, preacher, lay hands on me, sister. Let me go to this meeting, this meeting, whatever, when I can lay hands on myself and declare that the word of the Lord says that by his stripes I am healed. And we spend time and money and resources and energies. Yes, I'm so delighted and thankful for all these ministry gifts. But my God, Tom Stammon, like last week, last week he was 360 days preaching? <laughs> Come on, somebody. And, 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 you know, I mean, you know, this, this I like, I'm going to say it like this. This is, this is, in the name of Jesus Christ, without sounding arrogant, and because those of you that know me know this ain't me, this is my territory. Amen. I'm taking this territory for God. Yeah. I ain't going to let the devil run up in here and just have people running all. Do you notice that there's not many sick people in this congregation? Yeah. That ain't by coincidence, baby. And you bet it, I, I will. There's not many sick people in this congregation. And I'm going to tell you something else. Ain't many broke people in this congregation. If you're broke, you choose to be broke. You have learned about the process of sowing and reaping, seed time and harvest. You have learned that God is a good God. He's a healer from the beginning. My God, he's got spare parts in the warehouse of heaven. All you got to do is know how to get it. Amen. That's, not, that's not what you're going to hear going other places. You make the choice. Let me keep going. Are you all right? Thank you, Father. Ah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So let's keep going. I, I, I got a couple more points. Can I keep going for a few more minutes? Ah, uh, bless the Lord. So we, we just read that from Mark 11. Okay? Now, please understand that this is important. Because we, we've all, people have always said, um, you can have what you say. That ain't true. You don't see that in the word. See, some of y'all like, some of y'all like what? I thought it said that in the word. You show it to me if it does. You have what you believe when you say. And you know what the problem with most people is they don't believe it. Because they feel like you got to work for it. Now, you got to put the work in, but you ain't working for it. 
This has been guaranteed by the blood of Jesus, baby. It will work for anybody that dares put it into practice. But we don't, we don't do it. Now, I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about the other church. I didn't mention no names. You got a thought in your own head. I didn't say that. You did. I tell people this. I've said it frequently. I'll say it again. You come in here with all this, this faith stuff, hands lifted, praise coming out your heart. Remember what it said about, about, about uh, Thomas, that when, when he realized who he was standing from, the word, the love just spilled out of his heart, man. We should be like that every day of the week, not just Sundays. But my God, if I can't get it on Sunday and I go to your church and I can't do it because y'all, y'all, y'all too prim and proper and we don't do that here, I must be at the wrong house, baby. You know, God don't need adults, man. He don't need adults. So you so wound up so tight you can't even, you know, your britches would rip if you, if you stood up. You can't lift your hands because, you know, somebody might, might see you. Uh. <laughs> but not here. I had an 83-year-old man grab me the other day and run me around the building. Yeah, I'm talking about you. 83 years old. He grabbed me and there was a whole bunch of us running around the building. Come on, somebody. Is God bothered because of noise? The Bible says that at the voice of his, his voice that the water spouts and the mountains shake and tremble. Now what's your little decibel going to do? Oh, tell him to be quiet down there. I'm resting. <laughs> oh, man. And, you know, the thing I'm, well, let me keep going. Let me keep going. All right. I ain't going to ask permission. I'm going to just keep going. All right. Yes, sir. I'm listening. So you, you, you will be more effective if you be more selective. Hurt your faith if you're not confident before you release your faith. How do you become confident? Know the word. We talked about liars can't, cannot be people of faith because they don't trust in their own words. Turn to Philippians 2 for me real quick. I'm beginning to wrap this up. Philippians 2, 13. Glory to God. When you have a say, man. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One of these days, I'm going to learn how to preach, man, I tell you. I am. That's my quest, baby. You ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Philippians 2.13, you have it? Amen. For it is God, just that one verse. It is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I remember the first time I read this scripture, it about made me just want to just close my Bible and say, where's that been all this time? Somebody said, well, you know, I don't feel like doing it. The Bible says, for it is God that worketh in you, both to will and to do. You say, well, I don't feel like, but the Bible says it is God that worketh in you. Come on now. Now, if we believe that, that anything you want to do for the kingdom is inspired by God. Why would God waste air, energy, substance on people that don't want to live for him? Why? Well, because John 16, I had it somewhere in my notes. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world. Can you give me the Passion Translation of that, John 3.16? I read it from here last night or the day before, and it was like, whoa. Hold your place there. I'm going to come right back there in a minute. I want to I wanna read this. John 3, 16 from the Passion Translation. I got it in my notes, but it's be quicker for you guys to put it. Let me know when you get it up there. Got it? For this <laughs> is how much God loved the world. He gave his one and only unique son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in him will never perish but experience everlasting life. Now, 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 that does not say every Christian. It says everyone. Now this is hard 
for the charismatic Pentecostal religious mind to grasp, but I'm going to throw one out there for your own consideration. Somebody that does not worship your Lord could come across this scripture and all their life been in covenant with another reformation or belief system, and God will accept it when they believe in Jesus Christ. Even if they got a turban, even if they don't dress like you dress, don't shout like you shout, because God loves the world. And because he loves the world, you and I are required to love the world. We don't love sin. We don't love evil. We love the world. I was listening to a message earlier this week by Dr. Savelle. I just happened to be looking for something else and came across it. The name of the message from years ago, it says, uh, look no further, I'm your man. And in it, one of the things that he said, he was talking about how, you know, you know, I don't know about you. I want to be. I want to be used by God. I, I, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface of this thing. And I'm not talking about used as in have a bigger church. I'm talking about used in the service of the Lord. If He just wants me to go out and just pick up trash for His glory, and in picking up trash, I come across somebody who needed to for me to be there that day picking up gum wrappers. Then I have done the will of the Father. Are you hearing me this morning? But I want God. I don't want God to have to look for somebody else. I don't want them to have to look for somebody else to come to Iowa City. I don't want them to have to look for somebody else to come to Corville. I don't want them to have to look for somebody else to be married to her. I'm called to be married to her. So why am I out trying to chase somebody else's woman when I got one right here? Why am I out here trying to chase somebody else's ministry when I got one right here? Are y'all hearing me this morning? Look no further, God. I'm your man. But in order to do that, I got to love what he loves. He loves people. He loves people. He ain't trying to be no Mr. Big Stuff and Mr. You know, you know, uh, you know. I, I know Greek and Latin. Who cares, baby? I care about your Greek language, your lexicon, your Hebrew. This who cares? <laughs> well, the last time you 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 showed service by without having somebody to tell you thank you. Ain't nobody watching. You, you pick up the trash. And you got to wait to make sure somebody look around the corner for you. Collect. Come on now. <laughs> Let me keep going. Let me. <laughs> for the first timers, welcome to Life Point. That's all I can say to you. But. <laughs> let, 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 I, left you, I left you where? Philippians? I, we, we read that, right? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you. for. I'm good with that. Okay. Now, last, last portion here. I want to do this. And I'm going to get you out of here. Thank you, Father. Mm -mm. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help me, Holy Spirit. I'll find it here. Find for me, uh, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Somebody find that for me. I thought I had it in here. Somebody find it. Let me know when you find it. I thought it was Jan, but... James 4. Put up James 4. Maybe that's what I'm looking for. Can you put up James 4, please? Get in King, King James Version. James 4. I think it's James 4. I don't have the scripture, but I have the reference. Pretty sure it's that. Is that it? Okay. Put up James 4, verse 7. Hallelujah. Thank God for our helps ministry. Give our helps ministry a hand. Would you do that, please? Thank God for them. So delighted. So delighted. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I tell you what, I, I'm, I'm walking, but I sense the power of God in here, man. I tell you, I, I have had my expectors on all month. I can tell you, remind, somebody remind me, I'll tell you a funny story that happened to me on Friday, but I, I want to tell you after I finish. Listen, listen to this. You've heard this before. Have you not? Have you read this before? Anybody that has never read this in your Bible? Nobody? Everybody's read this. Okay. The Bible says what? It says, it says submit yourselves, therefore, to God. You know, you can take what you want to, you know, does that mean to bow down? Does it mean to stand up? You know, nah, it means let him have control of your life. <laughs> I'm going to take it another step. You know the real indicator that God has control of your life? Your mouth. I ain't, that didn't go over very well. Your tongue. Because you got to remember, James is the one talking about the, that the tongue 
is full of iniquity. And it sets things ablaze, baby. Oh, help me, God. I'm going to say it because I hear it coming from my heart, from my spirit. Come on, we're maturing here. The things you're dealing with came out your mouth. They didn't come from God. I mean, they definitely didn't come from God. They, some of them didn't even come from Satan. All Satan did was join in agreement with you. You said it. That child acts that way. You've been talking bad about that husband. You've been talking bad about that wife. You said it. Hey, Satan said, I can get with that. I'm going to prove it to you in just a second. So, so here he says, uh, uh, you know, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Then what's the next word say? We quote this now. Most of us say resist the devil and he, go back one. Most of us say resist the devil and he will flee from you. How many of you heard that said wrong? Come on, come on now. Don't be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Resist the devil. I resist the devil. I, but you ain't submitted to God because you ain't been in church in six months. Well, I thought I didn't have to come to church. Who told you that? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that don't forget to forsake the assembling of yourself. That means come to church. <laughs> but, woo. You know, I mean, you know, you say, well, you know, I, I'm resisting the devil in my finance. If you not if you don't tithe. Amen. You're giving him a wide door open into you. I wish I could get some help in here. I, I mean, you know, look, look, if 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 I'm if I love this woman and I'm constantly talking bad about her and I want God to heal my marriage, I don't care how many counselors you go to unless you change your mouth. I didn't think it was that important. Who told you that? Them bad teachers. Oh, that's that blabbing and grabbing bunch. <laughs> it's that naming and claim it crew. They're just weird. Yeah, I'm weird, but I'm blessed. I'm weird, but I'm healed. Yeah, yeah, you feeling me? Ha! Huh? Man. <laughs> so submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. Now, here's the problem with that. Here's the problem with that. First of all, the devil doesn't have to resist you if you're a liar. I'll show you what I mean. Hold that again for me, sir. You got open hand. If the Bible says, not Tommy, not you, the word of God says, and I can pick any, any, any number of scriptures, that says that God delights in my prosperity. And I say that I'm broke. I am lying. Why am I lying? Because number one, I don't believe God's word. And if I don't believe God's word and I say something crosswise with his word, God can't do anything to help me because he's already sent his word. So once I open my mouth, the devil's like, yeah, I got that. I got plenty of broke in my kingdom. I got, you know, I just feel like I'm catching the flu. Whoa, 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 slow your roll. Back up now. You catching the flu? I had one brother. This is a true story. I had one brother that used to come to this fellowship when we were in Tiffin in our early days. He used to come, and everything, every time I saw him, he would be given a share a testimony say, you know, when I had my heart attack. He kept saying, you know, yeah, you know, like I told you about my heart attack. And I kept telling him, you're going to change that. And I knew he was new to the word. Camp. He didn't understand. I was like, listen, every time you claim it, it comes back. You're giving the devil entrance. People say, well, does it come to? It absolutely comes to that. Yes. I'm not over exaggerating this thing, baby. Yes. You want to find out why things aren't happening in your life the way it's supposed to? Go trace your words. Yes. And I couldn't get him to back off that my heart attack stuff. Finally, he just got tired of me hearing it, and he left. I, I don't know what happened to him, but I know this much. If he didn't change that, chances are another heart attack was going to find its way to him. Yeah. My cancer. It's not your cancer. It's the devil's. That's right. That's right. I was in service the other night, uh, Richard and Lindsay Roberts. And uh, Lindsay Roberts, you know, I just went over there by myself. My wife couldn't go. So I was sitting over there, and she started prophesying some radical stuff over my life. I'm like, boy, baby, I received that. 
Because like I told you, I'm hungry, man. I, I, I need to see, and I ain't talking about no hungry man dinner either. There ain't enough food in that thing to feed a baby. And they call it a hungry man. Baby, I need a full appetite, full, full on smorgasbord of the word of God. I need it coming from the left, the right, the, the east, the west, the north. I need it coming at me all times because there's so much trying to stop me from preaching the word. And stop me from believing that what God said is always true. So the devil doesn't have to submit to you if you are yielding to him. You say, well, I rebuke you. And? <laughs> Jesus I know. Oh. Paul I know. Who are you? Well, you know, I'm a child of God. You don't believe that bit anymore and you believe there's a man standing on the moon. But you want to stand up and parrot something that somebody told you. I told you, if you're going, look, if you're going to really be successful in this life, you're going to have to get serious about the word of the living God. And it's going to have to be something that's more than just a casual glance. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> a lie is the language that the devil fathered. He fathered that language. I can remember when I was, when I was, my wife and I were first married. And I'm going to be transparent. I don't care. I mean, you know, we haven't been perfect. We talked about the first eight years of our marriage. We were on our way to divorce court. But it wasn't nothing for me to tell her a lie. It wasn't nothing. Hey, keep down the wrath of Lynette. Eh. I didn't have no fear of God. If I had fear of God, I wouldn't have been lying to her. So what I fear her for? We grew up thinking that, you know, Lord will get you. Psst. Don't you move from that. Don't you squirm in that chair. God will get you. Psst. Uh, you move. Psst. And then daddy gets you. Daddy really gets you. But that's, uh, you know what I'm saying? So, so it, 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 when, when, listen, and so I had told so many lies that by the time it came time to tell the truth, it felt weird. Oh, I ain't the only one in this church now. Y'all gonna, gonna come up off that Pentecostal high horse of yours. I know good and well some of y'all just stopped lying yesterday. <laughs> you ain't gonna sell me that one, baby. And, and so when I told her, that this, and you know where the truth came out? When I gave my heart to the Lord, you know, listen to Brother Copeland, you know, and, and listen, developing a friendship with God. And I'll never forget I went in there and, and I didn't even know what to say. I was tongue-tied. I didn't know what to say. I said, uh, honey, <laughs> and, and it was hard because I, I hadn't told the truth in a long time. And I'm not talking about, well, you know, I'm going to the car wash, I'll be right back. I, I might care. I'm talking about truth that might cost you something. I said, honey, I gave my heart to the Lord. And then she was like, hmm, I hadn't heard that before. <laughs> that's, that's the honest truth. She didn't really believe me until we went up to this man's church one Sunday morning in, in, in uh, East Spencer, North Carolina, and, and he made an altar call. I can't remember how it went down exactly, but I knew. And we were sitting on the same side of the church, and I was, I was fully vested in God. I knew God was working on Tommy, and I walked across. I had to walk away from her. I've told you this before, and walked all the way to the other side of the church. It wasn't that big of a church, but I walked to the other side of the church. She's over there. I'm over here with my hands lifted because I am now a truth teller. And she had to observe my order to make sure that I wasn't lying again. Some of y'all, yeah, you want people to start believing you, but you know, I don't care. I mean, I want people to believe me, but I want God to believe me first. Now, can I just make a couple more points? So a lie is the language of the, of, that the devil fathered. You can find that in John 8, 44. I'm not going to turn over there. What's the problem with a lie? It's a replacement for the truth. God hates it. Turn, put up Proverbs 16 for me. Proverbs 6, 16 for me, please. Proverbs 6, 16. A lie is a replacement for the truth. You know, you know Brother Copeland takes it to a huge, uh, he brings it to a real tight degree. He said, if you're supposed to be in a meeting at, at, you're supposed to be at the meeting and the meeting's supposed to start at 7 o'clock and you don't get to 7.05, you have told a five-minute lie. And when we get that serious about what our word means and it's the integrity of our word, then we'll start seeing God do some stuff for us. Oh, help me, Lord. But when, you know, and people, most people don't understand this, and we teach this here, you know, your, your reward, your reward from God is based on what he observes you do in this life, baby. 
And most people aren't going to stand up like this and preach the gospel in front of people. They're just not going to do it. It's not, you're just not going to, most people aren't going to do it. A lot of people don't want to do it. But you, want, you are called to do something. You are called to serve. Well, I don't believe God has called me to do that anymore, brother. You better make sure that's God and stop. Don't, don't lie on God. I better go to this side because you don't, don't lie on God. Well, you know, I just, I just don't believe God has called me to be married to you anymore. God said it was okay. And what's really going on is she's getting on my nerves. Oh, I better stop right there. Because, cause, cause see, cause, cause see, see, what happens is, see, see, every time, every time, every time, every time, every time I open my mouth, every time, and I'm careful. I told the Lord, I was telling the Lord, I did this, I did this, I got to tell him myself, I did this the other day. I might as well compound this with my, my other story I was going to tell. I was in Walmart the other day, and, and I said, Lord, set a guard on my mouth and watch, watch over my lips, because I don't want to say something that ain't true. I'm working on this. Amen. I'm willing to work on it. And so we were, we, she and I, we, we were standing in line, uh, and uh, our daughter-in-law was working the customer service area, and there was a lady there, and I said, do you know that girl named Crystal Roberts? That's my daughter-in-law. I was just playing. She said, yeah. She said, yeah, Crystal. Oh, Crystal, nine. You must be her father-in-law. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, is she a slacker? I'm, you know, I'm playing. This is me and Crystal. I, you know, she's standing right there. I said, no, no, no. She's not a slacker. She's good to go. Okay? Y'all got the picture? I walked then over, because I'm not going to walk in the store and not speak to my daughter-in-law. So I walk over, she's working, so I'm not going to interrupt her too much. But I slide up there so she can hear me. I do it all the time. I said to her, I said, listen, I said, uh, she said you were a slacker, Crystal. I said, I didn't say I said, I said she said. And you know what? The Lord said, you lied. Did he not? Now, I haven't seen Crystal yet. I told her, I said, Lord, I judge myself for that. It was just a joke. I know. But as we joke and as we continue on pushing the envelope of not allowing ourselves to be judged based on what comes out of our mouth, it, it gets higher and higher. And you know the mountain we really need to speak to is not the mountain of adversity. It is the mountain of lies that we have told that have gone crosswise with the word of God. I got a headache. Jesus said you were healed of the headache, but I got a headache. Jesus said you were healed of the headache, but I got a headache. Jesus said you were healed of the headache. Oh, okay, I'm healed, but I don't feel healed. Shut up. I'm healed. Take it by faith. I'm just because you're practicing what really is the truth. The truth is that you are healed. The truth is that you are delivered. The truth is that you are whole. The truth is that you are God's kids and He loves you the way you are. Stop trying to be something that you're not. Did you find Proverbs 6? These six things. Does the Lord hate? Yes, seven are an abomination unto him. Give me, give me the passion translation of that verse, please. These six things does the Lord hate. I'm on my last closing now. I don't know what y'all laughing about. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Passion translation, is that it? Let me know when it's up there, please. So if you, if you ask God to help you to willing to do these things even before you want to do it, he'll help you. Say, so I don't want to do that. Well, ask God. God will give you the want to. If your heart is right, whatever pleases him is what you should do anyway. These are six evils God truly hates. And a seventh that is an absolute, I threw that word in there, abomination to him. Go to the next verse, please. Putting others down while considering yourself superior. Can I say it the Tommy translation? Fully yourself. And I'm going to tell you something else. Hold it right there. The most egregious place this happens is in between husband and wife. Like somehow or another she inferior to you or he inferior to you. You can get over that. Spreading lies and rumors. It is my absolute privilege and delight and responsibility to kick anybody out this church that will spread lies and tell rumors. The Bible says that we should mark such a one as under the, the teaching of Paul. 
put a mark on that person, open their mouth, they're lying. I had a report come back to me, I'm not going to say a name, doesn't matter. The individual doesn't go to church anymore. Somebody came back to me and somebody that I knew I could trust. They were at a Bible study one time with this person. An unsanctioned Bible study, by the way. You can be with anybody you want to, that's your business. And I encourage it anyway. This person, person came and told me, and she was, this, this, this lady that told me was an ordained elder. She came to my wife and I said, do you know the language that that, that, that person is using after, after this, and, and how they're running you two down? Just, just blasphemous. Cussing, I mean cussing, and you teaching a Bible study? Come on, are you out your mind? And you want, oh, <laughs> pray for me. <laughs> You're a fool. You think people don't do it? They do it, but they do it to you. They talk about you behind your back. Oh, you that, you that doctor. I heard about that doctor. Oh, you that doctor. You that faith doctor. No, I'm a doctor. I'm a child of God, and I live by my faith. Don't get it twisted. And I'm understanding. Do you want me to treat you or not? Do you want to come to my establishment, my, my business? You ain't got to do business with me, baby. God supplies all my needs. That's why all these folks trying to push the, push the LGBT agenda. Yes, I did say it, and I will say it again. I love them. I don't love their sin. But you're going to come in here and tell me what I'm going to preach you? You're a fool. You ain't going to do that. I'm going to change what I preach because it's hate speech. Yeah, I hate sin like God hates sin. I would say the same thing about a wife beater, about a drunk. Come on now. And a liar because he hates all of that. Spreading lies and rumors, spilling the blood of innocent people. Plotting evil in your heart toward another. Gloating over doing what's plainly wrong. That should be it on that, right? Oh, yeah, spouting lies and false testimony. There's a good one. Stand under oath and tell a lie, flat out lie. Stirring up strife between friends. Is that talking about the political arena? Is that, oh, wait a minute, no, no, wrong message. <laughs> People just lying for their own agenda. I don't care who it is. I care if it's the president himself. I don't care who it is. A lie is a lie is a lie is a lie is a lie. And our, our government's going through all this, this stuff. These are entirely despicable to God. Write down James 1 and 6. 126, excuse me. John, James 126. Just write it down. If you can control what you say, you control your whole body. That's what it says. My wife, uh, she hadn't coughed much. I haven't heard her. For over two and a half weeks, she's had a cough that would not yield itself. And I walked up to her the other day and said, wait a minute. I mean, I'm just not going to put up with this. Now, Bishop, it may, not, it may not work the first time. Yes, sir. Keep it going. But I'm not a first-time guy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't show up to a fight, in, to a pistol fight with a, with a knife. I, when I show up, I show up fully loaded with the word of God. Amen. Amen. Didn't you hear me? Yeah. I, yeah, that's what I did. Didn't she? When you defeated cancer and sent it running, you didn't just do it once. And you can't just do it once. Because that beast will try to show up again. Any demon that you have conquered, because we've all been conquered, stop running around chasing demons. You're not going to chase them. They're chasing you anyway. And then when you do get in the company of them, all of a sudden they're like, I'm sorry, my apologies. When you get in the company of a demon, you have to be like Smith Wigglesworth. He said he was sleeping. One time they, the counters, he was sleeping and he woke up and there was a demon in his room. And he turned over and said, oh, it's just you. Went back to sleep. Well, what are you supposed to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? Go back to sleep. Oh, and by the way, get out. Get out. You know, I mean, you know, we, we spend all this time and stuff that, that really Jesus has, has given us so much understanding. Well, let me hurry up. Let me, let me, let me. Y'all don't want to hear about demons. Let me keep going. 
See, because see, cause, see, cause what we do is we, we you know, I, I, I was thinking about Todd White and think about how cool his ministry is. But you know what Todd White did? He believed it. Right. He just went. God, if you need somebody, look no further. I'm your man. I'm going. Where are we going, Pastor? I'm going wherever say God says go. A couple months here in a few months, we're going to have a, the largest outreach, one day outreach this church has ever had in August of next year. I'm going. We got, we, got a, we, we got a commitment. I found out we got a commitment the other day. Yeah, I'm going to tell it. I'm pulling you like, yeah, I know you want to tell it. You ain't telling it. I'm pastoring. I'm telling it. I'm telling it. Who told you that? Me or her? Okay, well, I'm going to tell it anyway. I outrank her right now. When we get home, that's a whole other thing. Some of y'all don't know who this is anyway. But, but Walt Whitman and the Soul Children of Chicago have agreed to come to our outreach in August of next year. You know why you don't react? Because you don't, you don't know who they are. We saw, that, we saw them kids, and I mean, they got kids. They got kids that could feel from that wall to that wall, and this man is high energy, pumping out the word of God, uh, dancing, singing, and they just all over the place loving Jesus. Go Google them. You'll see what I'm talking about. Put, get them up on YouTube. And they said they'll come. Because I'm going. Are you going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Last couple here. It says, uh, uh, you have to be willing to be willing. A lot of us just need to figure that, uh, that dichotomy out. Just be willing to be willing. A lot of people aren't willing. Well, I will, but let me pray about it. You ain't willing. Just say no. Just be honest. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. No, I don't want to do that. Well, I'll think about it. You ain't thinking about it more than, you know. You know, I, you know I, I'm, I'm not, some of you are like, well, I, I don't, I really mean that when I say it. But you know, there's some things that I don't have to pray about. Either I have time or I don't. That's what it comes down to. It's not a matter of my want to. I want to do anything I can for the kingdom. But I always have time. So if I don't have time, I can't commit to it. Stop lying and say you're going to do it, and then you turn around and don't do it. And you, then you don't show up. It's just like this. Let me say this according to Matthew 18. Matthew 18 talks about the prayer of agreement, Right? If, 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 stand up, my brother. Stand up, stand up, sir. Stand up, sir. Stand up, sir. I know you're working. If he says to me, Pastor Tommy, I need you to believe with me and come into agreement that I'm going to uh, fly the space shuttle one day, um, and that's my desire, and I heard that from God. That's what he says to me. You sit down. <laughs> okay. I'm proving a point now. Don't get all religious. And how old are you? First of all, do you have any aeronautical training? I don't think they're flying a shuttle anymore. Am I the only one? Are they, has the shuttle gone up recently and I missed it? But the shuttle? Not the space shuttle. They're flying, aren't they? Are they flying a shuttle? They, but, but they don't have this. But the shuttle's not going, is it? Not the... Not the the, 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 the space shuttle, the airplane looking thing that, but they got, they got astronauts going because, you know, Elon, is it Elon Musk or whatever, you know, they got them things. Te- I get that, but so I'm thinking myself, how can, stay up one more time. Give me a hand. I come into agreement with you. Amen. That is a lie. I don't a bit more believe he is going to the moon, then I believe that somebody's already living in the moon. Now, I didn't say going around the moon. I believe that. Are you feeling me? Why would I come into agreement with something? Somebody says, somebody says, I need somebody. Come here, come here, come here. If this man comes to me and says, Pastor, Pastor, I, I want you to agree with me that, that, uh, uh, that I'm going to be the president of the University of Iowa. Oh, that's right, my bad. Nebraska, Nebraska. I'm sorry, my bad, my bad. No, Iowa, I like Iowa better right about now. And he come to me, first of all, he don't like Iowa, but he said that God said in his heart that he should be the president, become the president of Iowa. I'm going to have a real stretch in my faith to believe that he's going to be president of Iowa. Yeah. Y'all, y'all don't get real spiritual on me. Y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I think that, you know, I know you got a bachelor's, but I think you need at least a master's degree to 
Okay, you're going to get your master. Well, I don't want to do that. I'm going to bypass all that. You not, so you're not going to get your doctor? Nah. Favor. Favor. <laughs> favor. Favor. I'm just believing that that's what God. He ain't hear from God. Right, right. Now, 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 here's what I should do, but I don't do this because, you know, the good Christian thing to do is to pretend like I believe with you and walk away saying, that's crazy, man. He ain't. That's what he just told me, man. That's the Christian thing to do. What I should do in love, say, brother, I don't think that's a realistic. I, let, let's talk about how you heard from, did you eat a bad sandwich last night? Or bad, bad, <laughs> you eat two-day-old pizza or what? I just don't hear God's, I, and here's why. But see, what you can sit down. You know, we don't speak the truth. We want to be, be ultra-spiritual and talk about, you know, well, God can do all things. But I know the Bible says, according to your faith, be it unto you. But listen, this, you know, he ain't never going to turn my body into that of a woman. Amen. And he ain't turning no women into the body of a man. I don't care what you pray. All right. I, I've, I've overstayed my closings. People believe it. Okay. All right. Last. I'm just trying to make sure I've covered everything the Lord has given me. Nothing is worse. Nothing is a worse representation of the church as a deceiving Christian. That's why they don't want to serve your God. Because your life is so inconsistent, so upset, up, up and down. I'm not talking about y'all. I'm believing that y'all, y'all out there representing the kingdom well. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. And you have to, you know, people that struggle with things like addictions and that kind of stuff, you know, you need to write this down. You, you, you got to be willing to love something else more than the thing that you love or are addicted to. You know, if you're addicted to, you know, some people are addicted to pain and rejection. And so because they don't love themselves, they will compromise themselves and open themselves up for more of that. So they'll stay around people who constantly do that to them. But if you get a picture of how much Jesus loves you and let Jesus loves you, you can bring all that stuff into, into uh, subjection according to the word of God. Whoops, excuse me. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise God. I got more, but I'm going to stop. Give your, give your ears a rest. Mm. Forgive me. Let, let, let me give you two or three more points real about the problem with lying. One of the problems with lying is you compromise your own belief and your own being. You compromise yourself, first of all. Second problem with lying is you, you, you literally ask the enemy to cooperate with you when you speak a lie in order to deceive someone. The, the, the enemy loves to do that. When you speak a lie, all you're doing is inviting him in. And the last thing, it, among other things, the last thing it does is lie, lying is an access point. It gets entrance to the enemy to work against you in your life. You know, people say, well, you know, people say, well, I love you. Um, we, you can close your Bibles. We, we, we had uh, a couple things happen to us. Uh, I told you I'd tell you this quick story. <coughs> we had a couple things happen to us. When we were in Texas, uh, we, you know, our daughter passed away uh, almost 16 years ago now. And, uh, you know, anybody that's had a child depart, I never say lost. I don't use that word, lost a daughter, because I know where she's at, okay? I know where she's at. And she's not lost. She's really, honestly, she's really living on a different plane in a different dimension and realm than we are right now. And she's very happy, I can tell you that right now. Um, but but we, we met up with somebody who we hadn't seen in 15 years. And at the time of our daughter's departure to heaven, they were living with us. And in their living with us, particularly the, the male was a deceiver. I had a deceiver living in my home. Listen to me now. And in him living there, I did not, I did not, because I was so caught up in the pain of the separation, uh, my wife and I trying to heal, and I didn't confront uh, the deception because I didn't know how deep it went. Really, I really didn't. Uh, I, I, I got a phone call from, a, uh, and they may watch this, but you know, we talked about this the other day. I got a phone call from, the, from a dealer I co-signed with a, for, on a car for this individual. And that individual and his family were getting ready to leave town. And the dealer called me and said, Mr. Roberts, do you know that they're leaving town with this car and they don't have jobs? You co-signed for it, so if they don't pay for it, you got it. That's how I found out. See, God will protect you. He really will. So I had to deal with that. So I took the individual. So what I did is I went and sought counsel. I went and talked to my dad, spiritual dad, uh, Dr. Savelle. And, uh, and he said, you know, individuals got character issues, you know. And so... Took this, and she did, I'm telling you this because she did not know this. This all happened last week. After 15 years, we hadn't seen these people in 15 years. So 
I told her, what I told her is I took him out of my house, took him around to the park where our, my, our daughter passed into heaven, same park, and I said, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna steal from my family again. And I wasn't talking to him, I was talking to the spirit that was behind him. Because I could see him, now we can, we're, you know, we're not best of friends by any means, but we're, we're, we're cordial. And so I told him, I said, you're not stealing from me anymore. Remember when Jesus did that with Peter, Mark, Matthew 16? Peter stands up in Matthew, I think it's 16, uh, might be Matthew 13, but he stands up and says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he's, woo, 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 you know, all this stuff. And the next thing you know, Peter, Jesus starts telling him he's, he's got to die, he's got to go to the cross. He's telling truth, and Peter can't receive truth because it's too painful. Many times you can't receive truth because it's too painful. But the truth is what you need to get out of that lie that you're living in. If I don't love you, say I don't love you. If you don't love me, tell me you don't love me. But don't dare deceive me. Don't stick it to me in the back. Right. And go out and do other things. Don't tell me that you're with me. If you're not with me, leave. We have more hope of, of success if you leave and I leave. At least we understood that there was a reason and the truth is there. But when we're living a lie, nobody is free in a lying situation. So, so we dealt with that and, and, and so we talked and and uh, so I told him, you got to go. You got to get out of my house. I don't care how you, but you ain't taking this car. <laughs> now you're doing it. So, so I say that because we were able to get, get beyond it. Now, now, now the, the, other, the other, other, other problem with this is that what happens in, in, a, in a lying situation is that, that, that the devil is looking to use that more than anything else because he's used it against the people of God for so long. Listen, if you're, if, you're, if you're sick this morning, sickness is real. Sickness is real. Faith people don't deny the reality of things that are going on. I deny it's, a, it's right to, to inhabit my body, though. I, I've, I've been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been set free by, the, by what Jesus did on the cross. I don't have to struggle through and pretend that I love her. And all the while, I wish she wasn't in my life. Now, now I can really know how to love her because I'm loving him first. He first loved me, now I get it, I'm loving him, and now we can get our, hopefully get our lives on a track of, of success. But listen, don't, don't get on a track of, of success with healing and, and leave, leave prosperity behind. What good is it to have a, a life full of energy and exuberance and you ain't got no money? You can't go do nothing. You wanna go on a missions trip, I can't go. I gotta work. There's nothing wrong with work. You should be working. We all need to work. But, but do the work of the ministry. Trust. It's, 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 harder, it's harder to trust God in the work of the ministry and, and trust him for your needs to be met. I, I mean, I've got some people that I know that are, that are, that are literally doing this. You know, they're, they're, they're doing it uh, because, because it's, it's not easy. It is not easy. I'm not suggesting that it is. Stand your feet for me, please. I want to tell you something, but I want you to hear me. And I'm going to wait till all rustling, everybody gets themselves settled. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to just, just put it right here, and I'm going to put it in your face. I've overstayed my time, but I just sense the presence of the Lord. Those of you that have, have, have been misrepresentative of the faith of Jesus, um, how do I say this, Lord? Ah, almost. Okay, I'll say it like this. Ignorance is one thing. Ignorance is not a bad thing. But ignorance can be fixed. Unbelief can be dealt with. But it will not happen if you're lazy. It will not happen if you're apathetic. It will not happen if you just take just willing to take whatever like a doormat and whatever comes you just accept it as just well that's God's will it is not God's will for you to go through this stuff we read about that in John 3 16 he gave such a unique and one and only gift in Jesus now I'm saying this to you because I want you I love you and I want you to hear me well that is that there are people that I love that I do not trust I'm going to say it again. There are people that I love I don't trust. Because love is owed. Trust is earned. You want me to trust your word? Stop lying. Stop lying to yourself first. 
Either you're healed or you're not. Well, I don't feel healed. You're lying. Wait, what do you want me to say? That I'm healed? Yes. Why am I going to say I'm healed? Because Jesus said you're healed. Jesus bore the stripes. Jesus shed the blood. Father let him go. Father allowed him to be nailed to the cross. Father, Father, Jesus, Jesus, Holy Spirit. All of this was their plan for you and for me. How dare I, because I think I'm something, change my words to be in league with his enemy. Why well, ain't that big of a deal, Pastor Tom? Yes, it is. And I, I can't tell you what comes out of your mouth. I can only tell you what comes out of mine. So I told you about my little Walmart story, about my daughter-in-law. I told her, I'm going to see her. I'm going to tell her the truth I want to hear. I want to pray with you real quick. If there's anybody, would you just kind of bow your heads? You don't have to close your eyes. Bow your heads. Please do that. Would you do that, please? Bow your head. There are people, there are people that are responsible for looking around because of various things, but if you're not responsible for looking around, just close your head. I'm not close your I mean, bow your head. I'm not going to touch you. I'm not even coming near you. I don't need to come near you. You've heard enough messages. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. This is not a game. The power of my words, the power of your words are what's going to change your life. You believe me that what Jesus said is true. If you believe it, you do. If you don't, you don't. I want to pray for anybody in here. Put your heads down. Again, eyes open, eyes closed, your choice, but heads down. Anybody in here know that you have not been true to your own belief system in Jesus. In other words, what I mean by that is you've just kind of been on, 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 on uh, uh, autopilot. You've just kind of coasted. You're not really serving him. You're not really pushing and pressing into his presence. You're really not. Don't act like you are. See, on that list of the things that God hates, one was pride. It's, as a matter of fact, it said a proud look. Not even pride, but a proud look. There is no such thing as good pride. My daddy used to say, our daddy used to say, I'm godly proud. But there's no such thing. God doesn't talk about pride. He talks about love. He talks about grace. He talks about mercy. But he never says, I'm proud of Jesus. He says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Would you be courageous enough to just lift your hands and you know that you've just been coasting, you've just been kind of going through the motions. I want you to just lift your hand. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. No looking around. Just, you know, nobody, nobody can see you. It doesn't matter. But Jesus, Jesus, okay, put your hands down. Thank you so much for being honest. If after all I've said, you lied and did not raise your hand because your position, because you were Pastor Tommy or you're so-and-so, you, you, you're missing it. You missed the whole thing. Come on, let's try it again. I'll give you one more chance. One more chance. I, I, your head's still bowed. If you didn't raise your hand on the first one, but you know you should have, would you just lift your hand? Come on now, don't. This is too important. This is a soul-saving station. Thank you. I see your hands. Put your hands down. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Your great grace and mercy has allowed me to stand here and minister probably longer than some of them had intended to stay in church, but they stayed and they heard the word of the living God. My Father, in the name of Jesus, I want them to see you. I want them to hear you. I want them to know you. Know you. When Jesus, when you stood and ministered, you never ever brought attention to yourself. You never said, look at what I've done. Look how many people I brought to, to, Jesus, to, the, to, to, to the Father. You never, 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 you know, all you said was that I only live to do his will. Father, let that be our banner. Let that be our, our quest. Let it be of the greatest desire of our heart to only live to do the will of the one who died for us. Jesus, that's you. I want to pray for anybody in here. And again, most of you have probably already been born again, but there may be somebody who's never heard the message of the cross. You've never, never submitted your heart to Jesus. You never said, you know what, I'm going to take this thing seriously. I want to learn how to live for Jesus. If that's you, would you just lift your hand? I want to pray with you real quick. I want to pray with you. I want to believe God with you. Because what you're telling me by no raise hands, if you don't raise your hand, is that if you, if today is your last encounter on this side of eternity, in this room today, that if your life of your body were to leave you, you are absolutely prepared and ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ and to give an account of your full life's work. It's a powerful statement. I commend you, but if you're not, don't let this chance pass you by. I want to pray with you again. I want you to repeat after me. I want everybody to repeat after me. Father, 
in the name of Jesus. I was guilty. I did it. I really did it. I really did do it. And I am sorry. I didn't know you. I didn't know it hurt you so bad. I didn't know you loved me so much. I just didn't understand what they were saying. But now, I believe. I'm not like Thomas. I believe. Not having seen you in the flesh, I believe you. I believe that you are the sacrifice of sins. I believe that you are the healer of my body. I believe that you want me to prosper and be in health as my soul prospers. I believe all of that. Use me, Lord, to a greater degree. I want you to be bold enough to say this with me. Jesus, look no further. I'm your man. I'm your woman. In Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Would you do that? Amen. Amen. Amen.